All right, so today we will be having an attempt to fix this here uh, Husky air compressor. Um, it's a 26 gallon, 150 PSI. It's like a one and three quarter horse motor, something like that. Uh, the motor works just fine, but uh, I bought it at a uh, work charity sale. All the money went to a charity and uh, got it home. And of course it didn't work. It also uh, peed out some rust. Not really enthused with that. I think it was put away with pressure in it. And yeah. Anyways, a couple things were wrong. Uh, first, uh, these are fine. Just took them off for access. The hose that goes from so this this is the uh, effectively the crankcase uh, and uh, for for what it's worth of the uh, of the the piston of the motor. And there's a hose that went from here to the inlet on the tank and it had just popped off. So, so let me show you what we got going on over here. Uh, this is the old um, uh, cylinder sleeve. Uh, it actually looks pretty okay. It's a little smoothed out on the inside. You can kind of see the reflection, not too bad. This is the old piston. Uh, and what I thought was wrong at first, what commonly happens with these is this little lip on the outside gets worn down. Um, as the piston travels through the cylinder head, it kind of goes like this. So it goes in at an angle and then comes up and out at an angle, kind of like that. See that? And over time, that just wears down this little, uh, it's usually copper or something, that little outer lip. Uh, so I went ahead and bought a new piston and, uh, um, and while taking it out, unfortunately, I wanted to reuse this, but uh, two things. One, you can't just buy a piston. You have to buy a piston and the sleeve and the gasket. Uh, and two, the gasket stuck to the uh, <clears throat> to the uh, to this piece here, to the crankcase, I suppose, the bottom end. Um, as I was taking it off, um, so I'm gonna clean that up a little bit, and um, uh, before I get the new one on. Anyways, a couple more parts. Okay, so this is the cylinder head of the piston, and it's fine. Uh, I'm not gonna be replacing. It, although I did notice that there was some uh, molding issues with this anyways or casting rather sorry <clears throat> um, I will be replacing this because you can't just this is fine this is the these are the valves so this is the inlet valve the air comes in through here and then out through there uh, and this is what actually goes to the tank so you see that side is what had uh, this hose attached had attached there and then this side was supposed to go into the uh, compressor, but um, this piece, uh, well, it's not doing it anymore, but I shoved it in there pretty good. This piece, uh, the, the little stem that's in there had just popped out. Uh, let me see if I can do it two-handed. No, I apparently cannot without ripping it. So I actually managed to semi-fix this cable. But as you can see, there's a lot of elasticity in there. Anyways, hose is cheap. Buy a new hose. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so I'll be replacing this with this. As you can see, it comes with gaskets. Uh, you, you can't buy the gaskets separately, like they, they just won't do it. So, um, okay, I'm gonna get started. All right, we are on there. Need to get the, the bolts on there, but uh, we're in. So uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to show you this one hand recording, but the piston, see that? And get you a good profile. See how it's angled like that? Yeah, there you go. That's why it needs to have that soft metal lip so that it can bend like that and still maintain a seal. Um, basically, every air compressor I've seen with a motor design like this, or uh, with a with electric motor, like basically functions like that. Uh, very few, very few have a straight up down piston. It's a uh, more more complicated. And this works fine and the parts are cheap, so why not? Okay, so Teflon tape on the uh, outlet hose and we're gonna put that in the cylinder head and put the cylinder head on. Quick pro tip to future engineers of the world. Do not put stupid plastic casing on that you cannot remove, that is in the way. It is so stupid, so annoying. I've had to cut out um, a little a little bit of the case here just so I can get at this bottom cylinder head screw or bolt without going in risking cross threading it or bent just just put a notch just you guys if you need this stupid thing it just put a notch please 
All right, cylinder head and valves back on. Have the uh, bolts in on both sides, there you can see. Pistons moving nice and freely. Have the outlet hose installed with some Teflon tape. Um, and as I move it, as I move the piston, you obviously won't be able to see or feel this, I can feel air coming out. So it's probably fine. I, I wasn't super sure how tight to make this. I just guesstimated tight enough. Um, so yeah, hopefully it is. All right, so we are just about back together. Um, I have the outlet hose screwed in. Got some Teflon tape on there. You can see that. Got the uh, solenoids reinstalled. Got the fan reinstalled. Got the bracket reinstalled. I don't have any extra screws, so we're gonna give it a test. All right, here's always a nerve wracking part. Uh, the valve is open on the bottom. I have the pressure. Now I have the pressure all the way down. Uh, so it's not actually gonna hold pressure. I just wanna see if it turns on and things do it, they chooch, as AV would say. Well, that's close and we're definitely feeling pressure. So what I'm going to do is figure out why it's doing that. All right, it is a new day, um, about a week later. Uh, you may notice the capacitors are a bit different. I had thought, so quick rundown, this is the starting capacitor, this is the running capacitor, and which one is used is controlled by this here. I thought this was a speed governor. It is not, it's actually a starting governor. Um, I had misinterpreted what it was supposed to do. So basically, this little metal plate, it's unplugged, uh, this little metal plate back here is effectively a spring, and what it's supposed to do is, it, well, so it closes the circuit on the starting capacitor. So when this, uh, uh, it effectively is a, a governor in that as the faster it spins, this uh, the spring uh, uh, stretches and this centrifugal force pushes it out. So this little plastic grommet back there releases tension on this metal plate. When it does that, it uh, breaks the circuit on the starting capacitor, so it no longer is part of the circuit. I'm not 100% certain what uh, actually the fallout is of having it always connected. I assume it's bad. Um, I am not a, a uh, electrician uh, a wizard by any means, but basically the starting capacitor only needs to be connected during startup, and that is like first, maybe, I would guess, 30, 40, 50 revolutions of the motor would be my guess. Something very, very short period of time, at which point the um, <clears throat> running capacitor takes over. Fortunately, these are like uh, 10 bucks a pop. So I, I have a brand new uh, running capacitor in there anyways. I have the old one um, just as a spare now. Um, but yeah, so uh, now after having learned how the startup uh, things work, we plug it in. Oop. And give it a go. All right. Now I have the valve on the bottom open, so it's not actually building any pressure. Um, but I'm just really happy uh, that it's. It's working now. Um, yeah, so the whole problem is I, I just, as I had thought, I'd mucked up the, uh, uh, this thing on the back, but it was not a over-evolution governor. It was a starting governor. Um, so yeah, I'll get the filter back in and I, I think I've got a really cheap, fully functional air compressor that I know how to fix now. So yay. Anyways. All right, I let it run for a bit. We're holding pressure at just under, uh, I don't know, was that probably 75-ish PSI, 80 PSI? Uh, and the regulator appears to work as well. If we turn that down, um, see it goes down accordingly. So now we're only getting like, you know, 50-ish tool pressure instead of the max. Let me put it back up and right back to max. And I'll be quiet for a second, but no, I hear no. 
leaking and no explosions and doesn't smell funny and uh, it works. So um, I call that uh, successful. Excellent.